Hey friends, hope you're doing well. This is Dr. Arun Deer once again. And uh, I'm bringing to you this video about revisional weight loss surgery. Now this is a question that I get asked quite often that, you know, what do I do with my, uh, you know, failing lab band or you, an individual may have had previous surgery. And revisional weight loss surgery is a huge topic in itself and I want to uh, in this video, I want to try and demystify a few little concerns uh, about this uh, because let me say that revisional weight loss surgery has got two primary indications. This may be considered either when a older operation that a patient may have had is failing or has failed and uh, the operation itself is not very effective now in producing the results. Or the second scenario could be that the individual has started to develop complications associated with the previous weight loss operation that they may have had. The complications could be uh, like we often see uh, with some patients who have got a stapling operation done which used to be done many years ago and is no longer done is that sometimes it becomes too tight. The opening is so tight that there is no solid that is able to go through or it becomes so loose that the staples literally open up and the individual is able to eat a normal amount of meal or a large amount of meal and they cannot get that restriction which gets them to gain the weight once again. So these are sort of the two broad indications when we consider a revisional weight loss surgery. Now, I must emphasize here that any revisional surgery is high risk. The reason for that is there is always a scar tissue that develops from any previous intervention and that is something that is not really native. So when we are cutting, dividing or stitching on native tissue, it is a different situation to when we are cutting, dividing or stitching tissue which has been scarred from a previous surgery because it doesn't heal as well and those are the things that can actually impact on the outcomes of revisional surgery. The other aspect of revisional surgery is that it needs a thorough pre-operative assessment and a workup by way of things like endoscopies, scans, x-rays, dietitian, psychologist assessment, and even assessment sometimes by, uh, you know, uh, physicians like endocrinologists and experts in diabetes because some of these problems may have reappeared or may have come up as new during the course of the patient's journey. One of the key things that we come across when the discussion of revisional weight loss surgery comes up is that of lab bands. Now lab bands, I must say Australia's love for lab bands shows in the number of people that are there in the community who have had a lab band done, but we have also come to realize that lab bands come with their unique set of challenges. I'm acknowledging that there are some success stories there with the lab band, but there are failures too. And I think the failures are becoming more and more evident because the inherent nature of the lab band is that it's a foreign body. The foreign body is always going to undergo some wear and tear, and that is going to create issues. More importantly, uh, the lab band needs ongoing maintenance and adjustments and things like that. But the one indication that really concerns me with the lab bands is that lab band causes more reflux or in common terms it's called heartburn. Heartburn is not a good thing for the esophagus specifically because it creates that internal burn. It is like an internal injury to the esophagus, which yes, some people think they can just manage quickly by taking quickies or Gaviscon or the likes, but the long-term risk of that is it leads to development of this condition called as Barrett's esophagus, which is precancerous. And that is what worries me the most. When I see people with the lab band, they are vomiting, they are regurgitating, they're having reflux or heartburn as we commonly call it, and that is causing them these ongoing symptoms. And this is putting them at a higher risk of developing Barrett's esophagus, which leads to then esophageal cancer. So this is where lab band conversion comes up and 
you know, there are these options that are there for patients who have got a failing lap band or have got other symptoms associated with lap band where we can convert that lap band into a gastric sleeve, which is almost always done as a two-stage procedure. Uh, the reason for the two stages of converting lap band into a sleeve is that when the lap band is put in the upper part of the stomach, it creates a lot of dense scar tissue in that area. And that scar tissue is not healthy in the sense that when we cut across that scar tissue to convert it into a gastric sleeve, that top end of the stomach may not heal properly and that will lead to leakage. Leaks following gastric sleeve are a disastrous situation to manage and no one wants to be in that situation or at least I don't want any of my patients to go through that. Hence, we choose to take a safer option uh, and the safer option is that we do the lap band removal including all the scar tissue to make the stomach as native as is possible and then as a second stage which is generally about four to six weeks after we convert to a gastric sleeve much better option, much safer option, and international studies have attested to the safety of this approach. The other option of a failing lab band is that of conversion to a gastric bypass, which is a procedure that can be done as a single stage. Now what that means is that we can remove the lab band and convert it to a gastric bypass uh, in the same operation itself, saving the patient uh, anas another anesthesia. The gastric bypass that we can consider as a second stage procedure is either a Ruin Y gastric bypass or also called as a double joint gastric bypass because there are two joints involved in that or it could be a mini or a single joint gastric bypass which are two variants of the uh, gastric bypass that we perform in our practice. So I hope uh, you have found some value out of uh, this information but one thing that I do want to emphasize is that all or any revisional surgery has to be complemented with lifestyle interventions and by lifestyle interventions I talk about a variety of lifestyle habits that will that if not put into practice will almost guarantee another failure and all those practices I have clubbed together in a separate program which is there on my website uh, called uh, the program itself is called super success after weight loss surgery and you can find the details of this program on my website www.centerforweightloss.com.au it's an eight part video series which has got several other freebies attached to it such as you know a free book that I had authored last year you'll get a copy of that and it'll give you a deeper insight as to what are the reasons for failure see the reason why you're considering surgery is you don't want to go back to surgery again as an option and if that's your intention which I hope it is I can tell you if you're not focusing on those key lifestyle interventions that I've summarized in this program, you will be repeatedly hitting your, your head against one form of obstacle or the other. I hope this has been of value to you. Good luck to you and wish you all the best on your journey to health and wellness. Take care and goodbye.